Hi, this is my review of Sci-Fi Adversaries Volume 1 for the Heroes and Hardships Universal RPG System. This is a collection of 20 adversaries, information on using such adversaries and the arch nemesis, new rules including details on abilities, ancestry traits, weapons, armor and weapon qualities, as well as manifestations. Now let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality is great. You have bookmarks, hyperlinks, everything is well written, organized and explained. The graphic design looks good, simple but colorful. When it comes to the illustrations, they are great, they are in the graphic novel style. Overall, the quality is perfect. Now, let's talk about the contents. The document starts with the information on Arch Nemesis and Adversaries. They are complete creations using the same character creation rules as the player characters. There are no differences between the two, besides the power level they are used for. Arch Nemesis NPCs are built at a power level higher than the game in which they are used. They are, of course, supposed to be quite powerful, while adversaries are built for an equal power level, and you have examples concerning that. When it comes to the new rules, in the case of abilities we have Psyker 3. Your mental capacity aids in the casting or activating of manifestations. Some adversaries presented here in this document require new rules, such as new abilities, ancestry traits, flaws, manifestations, weapons, and weapon qualities. This can be used for normal character creation as well, as long as it is approved by the game master. Let's talk about the ancestry traits. These two traits are for non-player characters. We have infectious. This creature's mere presence may infect others with a deadly pathogen. You have two variants, diseased and incubated. Then you have tiny. Tiny creatures are bugs, insects, or even microscopic life forms. Like I said, you can use this for player characters, but it depends on the campaign. There are some other things, such as alternate mode. When a weapon has an alternate mode of use, only the qualities listed under the alternate mode are used and any primary qualities are ignored. You also have armor bypass, which is pretty self-explanatory. You have no damage. This weapon does no damage to a target. There is also paralyze, which is also pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, no damage and paralyze are very situational, perhaps for non-lethal weapons or weapons used to capture enemies. We have manifestations concerning alacrity in the form of enhanced reflexes. You gain preternatural abilities to certain reflexes. Let's talk about some of the new adversaries or perhaps potential allies. We have the bodyguard. Bodyguards are muscle, hired to protect someone important. Bodyguards may or may not take a bullet for their charge, but those that are paid and treated well can use their skills to stop threats against their assignments. We also have the executive. This catch-all role can contain businessmen, contacts, fixers, and all the rest. We also have the ganger. Gangers are criminals that can be found down dark alleys, abandoned city blocks, and anywhere scum can be found. We also have the hacker. Hackers are the computer experts of modern sci-fi and cyberpunk settings. We also have the parasites. Parasites are tiny creatures that can deliver sicknesses to anyone they come into contact with. The best way to combat these creatures is to stay far away. We also have the Planetary Hive Scout. Hive Scouts are mobile insectoids that hunt and scout outside the colony. Then we have the Shadow Operative. Shadow Operatives use stealth and the art of the quick kill to their advantage. Then there is the Space Wizard. Space Wizards are powerful beings that use powers to perform amazing feats. This assists them in their melee combat prowess. They typically use an energy sword to deadly effect. And then there is the Voidborn creature. These are creatures immune to typical space hazards, such as lack of oxygen, radiation, extreme temperatures, etc. They attack anything that they can eat mindlessly. And these are just a few of the many adversaries and potential allies within this document. So what do I think about Sci-Fi Adversaries Volume 1? I think this is a good option. 
I wouldn't consider this a must have because you can create all of this with the rules and mechanics included in the core book of Heroes and Hardships. Nonetheless, for a game master that needs inspiration, that doesn't have too much time, this is a time saver and a great tool when it comes to running sci-fi games. The different rules, adversaries and such, some of them are a bit more suitable for science fantasy, some others for hard sci-fi, perhaps for sci-fi horror. Nonetheless, you will find something of use here or something to be modified or reskinned. So, I recommend it as a good option. Thank you for watching this review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham L. Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment in the comment section below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you. And see you later.